And right now I'm very pleased and honoured to be able to introduce Charles Schneider's The Keener Eye, featuring Greg Gibbs and Hilary Cummings. Thank you. Few artists in history have provoked so much interest or controversy as Walter Keane. And yet the truth behind the work of Walter Keane and of his wife, Margaret Keane, is a puzzle buried beneath layers of decades-old paint. May this evening's history lesson serve as visual turpentine in attempting to unravel some of the mystery of the Keens. Keens' artistic development prior to World War II may be divided into several periods which will be briefly examined here. The Paris period, fraught with lucid street scenes, formal and emotional qualities that rank with Cézanne's best work. Gaze at his popular Montbard. <laughs> Can't you just feel the rain? <laughs> Hear the footsteps of scurrying young women? Come and look with me at the primordial potency of the eye <laughs> as symbol. <laughs> Sumerian statuette circa 3000 BC at the Metropolitan Museum of Art to a seated figure of Rahotep in the Cairo Museum. You may find samples of the eye as the center of the artist's formal universe. <laughs> Life. There is a catalytic experience. There is a moment of profound clarity in which his divine purpose is made clear. For Walter Keith, this was not to be found in Paris, nor at the foot of some Himalayan lava. <laughs> no, no. There it was during a sketching trip across Europe. In 1945 and 47, <laughs> the Keynes Berlin period began. These ruins! Fantastic! <laughs> Those arches so oddly out of place, like stark skeletons. A once noble world now flattened, save for a twisted, bleached mountain of rubble and decay. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! 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 Good lord! Choke! What? No! I want to take life! Nothing screaming and crumbling! Still, there is forcing me to stay. My hand goading at me to sketch. And sketch he did like never before, putting every bruise, every shredded, mutilated mind and body on paper for all the world to see. A crude stick of charcoal capturing the matted hair, the runny noses.
above all, it was the eyes that burned into my soul, begging me to tell of this injustice. The eyes that would never leave me for a moment with their haunting, ceaseless pleading, never blinking, never weeping, only looking into my soul and yours. <laughs> a fugal harmony of girl and stairwell. The symbolic clinical distance of the distant alley there. An early tour de force. It weighs in mightily on the scale of our history for a mere 13 by 30 huh. inch canvas. Other artists before have attempted to utilize neo-primitive symbology in their work. Picasso, Mattis, Shaggle. <laughs> All tried and failed where I have used the eye to open the world's eyes to the entire human situation. This mad charade. He writes that he stayed in Europe until 1949, perfecting a new vision. He finally returned to Berkeley, California, and began work in a more tranquil world. My symbols, already there, the way the eyes, the stairs, the xenophobic vista, the vertical and horizontal systems, the slashing second layer of diagonals. Do you think this was unintentional? No, sir. 1954, Keen, already a legend of the North Beach, meets his second wife, Margaret, a brilliant artist in her own right. Their courtship is legendary and enviable. That these two geniuses should find one another was indeed a miracle. Why, yes, and you are. Oh, Margaret, just call me Margaret. I saw your last show at the Driftwood Gallery. I think your work is brilliant. Thank you. I see that you dabble as well. May I look at your portfolio? Why, of course. Oh. There's something here. The stuff of life. Distillation of the surf and salt. Scream of the seascape. The briny froth. Anxiety of a new generation. Sorrow, pain. It's all here in your work. Oh, oh, oh. Do you really think so? Yes. Somehow it reminds me of Salsalito. <laughs> the place that helped me crystallize my genius. Fresh as smoked swordfish at Nepempe, Salsalito. I was a pale, thin, brilliant, budding bohemian. He was a rugged, world-weary Romeo. I was into macrame and thought he was macramazing. <laughs> you know, Margaret, I was going to go up to Big Sur for a sketching trip this weekend. I'd love it if you'd join me. There's something about your eyes! <laughs> and from that point on, every brush fell with a fervor. Child after child materialized. They appeared so quickly, I just watched in amazement. As if I were only a medium through which some unseen force, or was it the brush? was guiding my hand. <laughs> Oh, 
What you working on, Margaret? Those raw streaks of color, primitive. He couldn't see it, but those streaks were the things that gave me satisfaction. It was a crude early work, part of an evolving style from my bitter period. So I humored him. Walter, why won't you ever let me watch you work? Just wait, baby. Just let me give it the trademark keen gleam. K E. to me personally, that I think I'll retain the original for my own collection. Walter Keen, I think I love you. <laughs> my masterwork was yet to come. The late 50s I dubbed my public period, and the adequate work of my wife was also coming into constant demand. Who bought Keen's from us, darling? Tell them! Joan Crawford, Dean Martin, Eve Arden, Jerry Lewis, <laughs> Kim Novak, Natalie Wood, Red Skelton, and so many more. Yeah. <laughs> Bright times, yeah. Breezy times. But the sun would not always look down upon the keys. Within time, a match made in heaven can become a thing forged in hell. And so it was for the keys. Several years later... I haven't seen you for days! Where have you been? Just keep painting and bring me a Budweiser, goddammit! Ah! <laughs> 
me. No, Margaret, please. children, but they didn't know he had threatened my children, that bastard, and even said he'd kill me if he, if I told the truth. The eyes were all mine, and they always will be. I've been doing them since I was 11, but I really got into big eyes while painting my brown-eyed infant daughter, Jane. I love painting eyes, and I always will. They take in so much sadness that they become happy. Those eyes, those tearful eyes of mine grew larger and larger the more miserable I became. Funny, isn't it? Shortly thereafter, Margaret Keene announces... I publicly challenge Walter Keene to a painting contest! But Walter didn't show. The dispute continued to simmer. Two years later, Walter is asked about her claims. She just thinks I'm dead. I was painting those waifs with those unmistakable outsized orbs. Ten years before I met that fucking bitch. <laughs> She's just saying that because she thinks I'm dead. She wants my ocular empire. I'll sue you for four hundred. The $400 million question landed in federal court. And then it was Walter's turn to paint, but he pleaded. Ah, uh, I'm taking medication for a painful shoulder injury. It would be impossible for me to paint today. Margaret and the jurors saw eye to eye. The eyes had it. They awarded her $4 million for the emotional distress and damaged reputation she had suffered because of Walter's false statements. You are a fake! It was I who have loved to draw and paint eyes since I was a child. I married you. I loved you. Painfully bore you a child. Was an amusing and attractive husband. Wrote nice things about you in books. I let you shine. Let you claim you did everything because I loved you, Walter. More than fame, or money, or even recognition. Margaret, since remarried and widowed, continues to paint at her home overlooking Waikiki Beach in Hawaii. <laughs> The big eyes have been getting happier, a reflection of her peace and contentment after becoming a Jehovah's Witness ten years ago. <laughs> and what of Walter Keaton? Some folks say that you can find him down in La Jolla at a local coffee shop. A local hero, despite the facts that came out in court. Others say he has the sad look of one haunted, plagued by something unresolved. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So what if Jesus told her to tell her tale? It doesn't matter. All I know is what I saw. All my laurels you have reaped away, and all my roses too. Death is an eye that can't say no. <laughs> and when I appear before God's azure vaults, he shall find me shot in canvas, gloved in lead. But in spite of this, I shall fight on, and on, and on, and on, and on. What's this? Berlin. I remember. 
remember this? Back when the play started. Huh? Yes, this is where it all happened. Those ruins. That xenophobia vista. Oh! 